Hello and welcome to Herefordshire Meadows. This short video is to remind those of you who made meadows in 2019 what we're expecting from you in terms of monitoring and also to welcome new meadow makers in 2020 and give you an idea of what we need. Rapid assessment monitoring depends on taking a number of samples across the meadow to capture a representative picture at that point in time. We would like you to take 10 samples in total because we consider this is a reasonable amount given the differing interests and abilities of Herefordshire Meadows group members and we've designed a record sheet to this end which is available on the website. Note however that the more samples you record the greater the likelihood of picking up change so if you are able do more by running onto two forms and taking 16 or even 20 samples. Walk in a W zigzag or meandering fashion, stopping at approximately equal intervals to record a sample. Here, two different acceptable routes are shown for a small meadow with the sample points depicted as dots. This example has not been tackled well, however, because there are too many samples squashed into the first half and not enough in the second. So from this, you can see that some consideration needs to be given of the space between samples prior to setting off. You can do this using scale bars on a map beforehand or by practicing in the field. Remember also that we're trying to capture the effects of a treatment. So if part of the field has not been sown, for example, with hay or local seed because of steepness or wetness, as in this diagram, exclude it from your route. So I reckon about 30 paces will give me the spacing I need between my sample points. So off we go. One, two, three, four, six, seven, twenty-eight. 29.30. Just straighten up the quadrat. There we go. Samples need to be of one metre square or thereabouts. I'm using a homemade bamboo quadrat in the video, but you could use 10 pegs and string or just use your legs and two other objects to mark out the area, as in this picture. Always remember to locate your samples as objectively as possible because we want to capture what is representative, not what is exceptional. So if an orchid falls just outside your sample, let it stay there. The best way to do this is to drop your quadrat quickly into position without looking at what is in front of you first. Observations on rare species can be made in a separate place to the main record later. Okay, so here we've got our first sample and I'm going to record all of the wildflowers or the broad-leaved herbs occurring inside this one metre quadrat, but I'm not going to record the grasses. It's a challenging enough job as it is because we're recording the herbs not just in flower but those which are represented as leaves only and if we can we're looking at seedling plants which have come in with last year's restoration operations. So starting with the most obvious ones, the plants in flower, uh, we've got bulbous buttercup here. We can tell at this time of year this is bulbous buttercup easily because it's the only common buttercup with reflexed sepals. We can also see the characteristic leaf here with a central stalk, very obvious here. And if we poke around we should be able to see the white tissue of the bulb, just as you would get in a daffodil. It's bulbous buttercup. The only other thing in flower at this time is here. This is the thyme-leaved speedwell, which is a speedwell without hairs, a small speedwell that grows in grassland with opposite leaves. I'm not going to attempt to explain everything here because there are various resources available on the website uh, and elsewhere. Two other obvious plants which we can see which are not yet in flower are our two clovers. So here we have the red clover obligingly just coming into flower and we can check that, check the hairs because of our two commonest clovers one is hairy and the other isn't. So I'm using a lens to check this and I can see that that leaf is hairy on both surfaces so that's red clover. Over in this side of the quadrat we've got white clover 
which often has these characteristic white markings on it, but not always. This is a variable plant because it's been highly bred uh, for agricultural reasons in many instances. But generally speaking, it's almost always hairless. And I can see that as well. So there we have our, our red and our white clovers side by side. This video is not intended to help you identify all meadow plants. You'll need a field guide and two of the most popular are shown here. If you'd rather not lug a book into the field with you, the Field Studies Council produce a range of compact, folded, laminated ID sheets of which the most relevant to Herefordshire grasslands is shown here. Further resources are available on the Herefordshire Meadows website. Follow the links Information, Resources, Survey and Monitoring to access these actual specimens from the 2019 season. And on the BSBI website where you should follow the links under Learn About Botany for much more. We can also offer recommendations, for example, keys to leaves only and grass identification guides if you get in touch. And remember, you can often put a name to difficult material by getting up and searching around the sample area for the same plant in a more advanced state of development. Lastly, for the most taxing specimens, we will accept photo queries by email, but please be sure to check that both leaves and flowers are in focus before sending them on. So a few more species which I've noticed. Here we've got the meadow buttercup, which you can see has all of the lobes radiating from the same point, unlike the bulbous buttercup we've just seen, which if you recall, the central lobe has a stalk on it. Next to cup here, we've got a couple of small plants of hogweed. And then in the centre of the quadrat here, we've got a a sorrel plant coming into flower. That's quite an easy one to tell even when it's not flowering because of its spear-shaped leaf with two downward pointing triangular lobes. And then another typical plant of Herefordshire Meadows, which we've got here, just coming into flower again, is a bird's foot trefoil. Now, one of the great things about Herefordshire Meadows or not, depending upon your perspective, is we've got both common species growing together. So we would normally need to take a closer look at this to tell which it was. So I'm going to use this piece of bird's foot trefoil to illustrate how to use a lens, which is an important part of the toolkit in field botany. Just going to prepare the plant so that I've got the material suitably arranged in my fingers. If you wear glasses, you're going to need to take them off for this. Have the lens touching your, your, your brow, very close to your eye, and then bring the material into focus. And I can see there that that has the characteristics of common bird's foot trefoil, which is veins that you cannot see through. Have the lens close to your eye, not down here somewhere. It won't work if you do that. So we now make our record. We had some uh, bulbous buttercup. Ticking the relevant box here in the column one for our sample. Right. Strike them through. And we also had some thyme leaf speedwell. This is not an exhaustive list of the plants that you'll find in Herefordshire Meadows. We've put it there because it's the common one to help you. But in this instance, we're going to need to add that in. Thyme leaved speedwell and the relevant record and we had some hogweed hogweeds down at the bottom of the form along with all of the other negative indicators or weeds which we've separated off sample five now and i can see some bird's foot trefoil some common mouse here there's the purple flowers of bugle in there, which isn't on the list, so we have to add that one in. Column five. And I can see some hay rattle over there, some yellow rattle just outside the quadrat, so I'm not going to record it. 
I could make a note of it, but I have seen it when I came into the field, so I'm expecting it will crop up in the sample sooner or later. And some hogweed there. Long column, easily done. There we go, sample five. It's important to have a thorough look, so you often need to root around the small plants that you might otherwise have missed. In this quadrat, this sample, at last, the all important yellow rattle showing its characteristic opposite leaves set in pairs on the stem alternating at 90 degrees to one another. So there's a mature or a maturing plant there and over here some younger seedlings where you can still recognize that leaf texture and appearance and just to here some seedlings which are barely beyond the cotyledonary stage which would be important to record as well. So here is the completed form. Before sending it in, please check it's legible and you can tally the total number of occurrences of each species here on the right and the total number of positive indicators per stop here along the bottom. And there's also space to make any additional observations perhaps about species which didn't crop up in the sample at the bottom there. Some species take longer than others to appear after restoration works, and several of the more desirable meadow plants fall in this group. Monitoring before restoration, and again for two to three years afterwards, is thus a good investment as you can return to the activity at any time. If the right management is in place and is fairly consistent, restoration grasslands are like wine, getting better with the years. This green-winged orchid with its wind-dispersed seed, arrived of its own accord three years ago. Herefordshire is one of the few counties left in Britain where there is sufficient remaining species-rich grassland and sufficient seed rain from this lovely plant, now included in the England Red Data Book, for you to be in with a chance of it turning up unannounced in your meadow too. Thank you for the important work you do in restoring this beautiful and threatened habitat 